Finn was, maybe he'll come back into contention because I think he's helped yeah. steer them around when he's been on the field as Definitely. the interchange hooker. And maybe Michael Seo with his more direct approach has didn't didn't help them out too much. Yeah. Um so I'm gonna go with home field advantage. Not that I'm not impressed with how Leah going, but I'm gonna go twenty points to sixteen Wakefield win. Okay, Friday night then. Uh two of the surprise teams of last season, Huddersfield and Leeds take each other on at the John Smiths. Although it wasn't a surprise in a good sense. Um, look, as decent as Huddersfield were in terms of going to Wigan to get a result and, and come away with some points, I still think that Leeds are now in the process of building that swell, that, that the swell of that wave and, and on a roll for results. I'm going to pick for the Rhinos this week, Mark. I haven't seen a right lot of Huddersfield, to be honest, so I'm perhaps not best informed on this one in terms of what I've seen Um from Leeds, but I saw enough from Leeds last week to tell me that they can go and if they get rolling forward and like you alluded to, Mitch Garber mm-hmm. can start punching some holes. This combination between Parcel and his forwards that's starting to yield some results and perhaps a good season from Cal Watkins is in the offing as well. All all leads me to think that Leeds will uh, will have enough to get a decent win here. Thirty points to fourteen. I'm going for in favour of the visitors again. Another away win. We've put enough mockers on, enough players there for Leeds. I'm almost tempted to switch my <laughs> pick. <laughs> yeah. Jim, um, every fucker, aren't but I, I do think Leeds will ride on what they've been doing well and just about have enough to beat Huddersfield. Who I was relatively impressed with the toughness and resilience they showed yeah. um, in the second half. We're going to have a good period on their line. And they forced Wigan into bad attacking rugby, more reminiscent of stages of last season than how Wigan have started this season Mm -hmm. um, for about a 15-minute period or so in that second half. And that bodes well for Huddersfield. And they are at least trying to be enterprising in attack. Uh, I like the way Lee Gaskell's fitted in. And I think with people like Ikehifo and Taya, they've... Uh, not Taya um, t- Akuma Tai they've got <laughs> I can't remember what I was listening to or doing or thinking Maybe, I think it was on the radio right or something but someone refer- oh no it was at the Wigan game uh, someone was saying he, he's a big lad and so, then someone looked at the programme and said oh it's that Akuma Tai and the guy next to us said oh Akuma Matata <laughs> For God's sake, a Kuma Matata. So there you go. Very so, good. Uh, oh, okay. so, 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 no worries, Ty. Yeah. Um, is a, is you know is a threat. So that they've got good stuff, but I think Leeds are going just that little bit better. So I'm going to go with the form book and go 28-20 in favour of the visiting Rhinos. Okay, the televised game on Friday night sees St Helens taking on Warrington at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Um, I just don't know. On this one, Saints got a result, but they were still far from convincing for vast swathes of that, even though they were, you know, coming out of the South of France with a win. And Warrington, the less said about them, the better so far this season. But don't Warrington basically look at going to Langtree Park as a guaranteed two points in the, in recent years? Since the since the totally wicked yeah. was opened. So that's why I'm finding it hard to separate them, because if there's a place to break your duck, then you know Maybe, but I just think Saints are going to have enough. I'm going for a drop goal win, though. But, Tight game, 21-20 yeah. in favour of Saints. But it could just so easily go either way. Maybe there's an, like the omen bashing mm. situation might not be on the team who's lost all their games this season and more be on the fact that the team who lost all the games against the opponent in that stadium. Yeah, I don't know, I think the home side will win. Uh, yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Have you got a score in mind? Do you think it's going to be um, close? Or? I think it's going to be close. 23-16 is what okay. I'm paying for. So I'm thinking there'll be a drop goal, like you think. Mm. Um, well, Matty Smith penciled in for this one, according to reports. Well, there you go. Uh, the, 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 maybe that that will help uh, certainly guide things. Yeah. I Why I think they'll win is I think Warrington's execution has got a long way to go before it's right. Mm. And even if Saints leave the sort of spaces that they left in the first half for Catalan... Yeah. Um, and the way they did the second half doesn't suggest that that might necessarily be such a foregone conclusion. But if they do, then I don't know if Warrington have the confidence and the execution to take any advantage of that. Yeah. Um, so I think Saints will tough it out and win. Okay, so again at the same time on Friday night, Witness taking on Sulphur down at the Select Security Stadium. I expect a spirited performance from Witness with some endeavour, but I think Sulphur will have enough to overcome what is a pretty toothless attack. So they you know, they work hard for each other, 
periodically, but it's just it's just difficult to see where the wind's coming from for Widnes as well. And Salford will be buoyed by that result over a very very strong Castleford side the week previous. I'm going 22 points to 14 in favour of the Red Devils. I think very similar, if anything, a little bit stronger for Salford. I think um, obviously. Daniel in his email towards mentioned their inconsistency and, and it has been kind of a home away split. Like you look at how good they were with discipline and errors and stuff against Warrington and the same against Castleford. I don't know if like this might be off week because of that, taking witness lightly potentially. Yeah. Um with errors costing them against Wakefield it, and a slow start maybe they'll approach the same way I don't know but I think that they've got enough they've got three half backs to come in and play oh, yeah. whereas Widness have barely got one so um, 30 points to 14 in favour of Salford I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm a while away from tipping Widness unfortunately there you go so the final game of Friday night sees Wigan taking on Hull FC and I'm going to flip my decision um, from what we talked about earlier Mark the, the, the injuries um, to this Wigan pack um, with the likes of Bateman and Farrell and, and Lockers being out um, and the fact that they are whilst admittedly getting young lads to come in and perform on the wings weakened out wide leads me to think that coming up against the side of the calibre of Hull FC they might struggle this week I'm predicting a close affair I'm going to keep the scoreline the same and just just flip the results um, and Albert Kelly inspired 20 points to 18 win for the visiting Hull FC yeah I mean injuries are a concern because they're affecting numerous positions now the halfbacks are still intact although how how fit everyone in the halves and the hook in full back positions are is a question mark but that sort of attacking spine is still intact mm. I think they'll have worked hard on fixing up some of the things that they got wrong against Huddersfield and there's a couple of nice things that they did that got right watch, watch Morgan Escaray's try for the yeah. quick hands um, I was doing very well in the play there and uh and so I think there's hope for us. And there's always a next man up attitude. Oliver Gildart's the only one who's realistically going to be back in for this one. A couple of us have a chance of the Leeds game. But um, I'm going to go 21 points to 20. Sam Powell drop goal. To Sam win the Powell game. drop goal. There, there you, you go. go. Look at that. Very specific stuff. Final game of the weekend then sees Castleford taking on the Catalan Dragons. The Tigers will be keen to bounce back from their defeats away at. Salford and show that it was a blip and I think they probably will do uh, Catalan missing still the talismanic Greg Bird and just not quite clicking um, and being able to string together that 80 minute performance yet yeah, I think Castle get worked hard in the week in terms of fixing things up for this one 32 points to 12 for me normal service resumed for the Ford 32 points to 10 for me and everything you said. There you go. Okay. But don't forget to make your Super Brew predictions. I'll be logging on um, immediately at the end of the record to do mine. Um, and to make changes to your dream team lineup should you have any transfers left or <laughs> need to be able to switch people in and out. And you can follow all the action as it happens over this weekend by giving our friends at SL Clubs a follow on the Twitter mark. What have you picked out for us for Championship Game of the Week? Well, it's um, two of the top four, Featherstone versus Toulouse. Mm. Um, Toulouse obviously have rested some people last week, yeah. it sounds like, so should be ready to go at Featherstone this week. Who had a, a tough game in tough conditions against yeah. your Bulls. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll be an interesting test for both of them. Yeah, I suspect <coughs> I might have too much for Toulouse in this one. If Toulouse are going to have top four chops and want to have a tilt at the middle, it's impossible promotion. These are the sorts of games that need to be going and winning. But post- or at least finishing close yeah. to give them the confidence. I think they'll win enough games at home mm. and pick up enough wins against the lower likes that they, sh- that they might get over the line for the top four. Mm. But, yeah. But this is a game they will earmark as a way of... You know, this is a, this is a barometer for where they are in the division at the minute. Yeah. Featherstone, admittedly not the fully professional outfit, but runs a professional outfit in every possible sense and a very, very strong championship side with ambitions of their own. So it'll be a good one to see. I suspect the West Yorkshire side will probably have too much four to lose. Um, a wily group that they are, but it could go either way for me. I think a narrow Fev win. Mm-hmm. League One game of the week. League One's back. What have you picked out for us? I picked out Workington versus the Gloucestershire All Goals, Tom, because one, we're getting a lot of feedback from Gloucestershire, but all the sounds are good yeah. and all the sights are good and it's a long old journey for them up to up to Workington. It but, is. but Workington have been in and out. They've lost a couple of games that you might have thought they'd have done a bit better in. Mm. 
Um, and I think this is one of those guys. This is a real test for the all goals credentials of the of the top half of the table finish yeah. because they've, they've won at home against the Northern side. Now, if they win away against the Northern side, that would be huge. Yeah, massive. And they've got the potential to do it. Yeah, I'm not sure they will. I think it'll be a high scoring game, which Workington aren't often involved in. Um, so if they can fall on the right side of that, I think it'll probably end up being about forty points to thirty in favour of Workington. But yeah. but I think the old goals have got a shot in this one. There you go. I think it's really exciting the little niche we've dug out for ourselves in uh, in Gloucestershire old goals territory as well. That's one of the one of the nice little perks of Super League Pod. The little nugget. I was tempted earlier to say that, that we were big in Gloucester, but I suspect we're just kind of. You know, noticed in Gloucestershire <laughs> rather than anything else. But Rel- well, relative to the crowd exactly. size, we exactly. have we probably have more Gloucestershire drop- followers than anything else. Than any other club, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good way to look at it. Um, and there are Brit picks. What have we got for us? Well, Rabbit O's versus Roosters, obviously one of the Burgesses out, but Tom Burgess had a big game in the um, reserve grade. Yes. So he might be the one who steps up and takes George's place anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, 9.05 on Thursday morning for that one. Panthers versus the Knights, you never know. Joe Wardle might get a go. 7am on Friday morning. And uh, after that, Broncos versus Raiders, 9.05 on Friday morning. You'll definitely see a couple of English players in that one. Hodgson and Whitehead are going well for the Green Machine. Um, I think that's two contrasting styles. An interesting one to watch. Yeah. Seagulls versus the Bulldogs on Saturday at 5.30am. If you want to be like Daniel Hull and... Wake your missus up for that. You'll get to see James Graham is in it, all his glorious gingerness. Is it worth it? Um, yes, it is worth or it. Or record it. Yeah. Uh, Titans v Cowboys on the Saturday 10am slot, which has been, for the last couple of weeks, a free view slot. So it'll be interesting to see if mm. that continues. This week, um, you'll obviously potentially see Joe Greenwood, unless his head's hurt. Potentially see Dan Sargent. So like he's been in and out of the side with injury and selection stuff but we'll see uh, and then the Dragons versus the Warriors on Sunday at 8.30am you will get to see Gareth Widdop kicking some goals again no doubt there we go right well that is your Super League pod taken care of for the week all that remains for us to do now is to wrap up the show Okay, we're rumbling towards the end of the 134th Super League pod and after what I'm going to call my performance of the season so far in last week's trivia, I'm assuming that you've, uh, you, you've bitten back, Mark, and uh, have come up with something, something torturous for us. What's the, uh, what's the trivia this week? Not necessarily. Um, it's a two-part. It's a two-halves of it. The second half is challenging okay. and I think when we do that one, if you don't know the answers... We'll leave it out there for the listeners to have a little look around and work out. Okay. Um, and come back to us. Obviously, right. Mitchell will be first because he'll be awake. And well, we'll, know by, we'll, we'll know by Tuesday morning UK time. Um, but yeah. Um, so so we'll. Leave, but first, we're going to start with it's my little sister Sky's 16th birthday this week. Wow. So happy birthday to her in, yeah. in advance. Um, so in honour of that, I've picked out some um, three three questions here on 16 year old debutants. Now, okay. Hopefully, they're not the the well known enough events because mm. um, a couple of them are are records sort of thing. Okay. Well known enough events for people to be able to pick up on, and, and I hope you can too. So I'm going to start with what I've got is who they played for, when they made the debut, mm-hmm. and then that's what you've got to go off. But you, you know they were 16 at the time, right? Okay. So. Um, he made his debut for Wigan on the 24th of November 1991 as they beat Keefley by 32 points to 8. 91. Who is it? 91. Andy Farrell? Yes, straight in there. I didn't even have to pull out the reserve clue of um, he had his first child later that same year. <laughs> Did he really? Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. lad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Faz, there you go. Okay, this next one made his debut for the Gold Coast Titans on the 11th of August 2008 as they lost to the Newcastle Knights 32 points to 12. So, this is the youngest ever NRL capped player. 
Oh, God. Not the youngest ever to play first grade in Australia, but the youngest in the NRL era. And it won't be beaten because they don't allow them to play it. 